Hello everyone, my name is Anev. I'm a PhD student at the Swedish University of Agriculture Sciences, sandwiched with the University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. I do a lot of research in Tanzania and Kenya, and I study soil microorganisms and their role in promoting plant health and protection. Today I would like to share um, my study on diversity of soil microorganisms in maize push-pull farming system. I will go through a background and then the methods we used to get the, the results and share some results, uh, some findings, but also a conclusion. Beginning with a bit of background, let's talk about what push-pull technology is. So push-pull technology is an integrated pest management approach that smallholder farmers in Eastern and Southern Africa use to control an array of pests. So they use it to manage stem borers, they use it to manage fall armyworm, but also a parasitic weed known as striga. So this technology employs an intercropping technology, intercropping approach. So it's called push-pull because one of the intercrops, known as desmodium, releases organic compounds into the area of organic compounds which send a signal to stem borers that this is not a good place to lay eggs. So effectively it pushes them away from the main crop. At the same time, a trap crop such as Napier or Brachiaria emit organic compounds that tell these stem borers you can lay your eggs here. But when the eggs hatch and the larvae start feeding on this trap crop, it then stops the development by releasing a sticky substance. So effectively using the population of say stem borers or fall armyworms. But at the same time, the smodium, the intercrop, releases organic compounds into the soil that trigger suicidal germination of striga. So striga, it's a parasitic weed of maize and sorghum, so it does not grow in absence of these two crops. But in the presence of the smodium, somehow, for reasons which are not very clear yet, uh, it's made to germinate and die before it attaches to, uh, to a, a host, which is maize or sorghum, and thus uh, leaving the space for maize to grow, the main crop to grow properly. So another advantage is uh, this modium is a leguminous plant, so it fixes nitrogen and help in fertilization of the soil. It also acts as a cover crop, adding a, uh, another benefit of uh, conserving moisture in farms. So this uh, is a push-pull plot. A maize looks fine, it looks healthy. When you compare to a maize monoculture plot of the same age at the same site, with the same treatment. So the maize is not healthy at all. It's hard to believe it's the same age. And this is uh, maize with uh, mulching as a way to suppress striga, but still it doesn't look as well as the push-pull maize. And this is sorghum. The last picture is sorghum uh, in push-pull farming. So the technology works very well and farmers do use it in Tanzania, Kenya, Zambia, and now introduced in Ethiopia. And the mechanisms of how the companion crop and the intercrop uh, play their roles are known. However, we, there are no published findings on how soil microorganisms contribute to effectiveness of this technology. Soil microorganisms are known to help in plant health and protection, such as through biofertilization or biocontrol diseases. And more recently, there is a strong emphasis on studying how below ground activities of microorganisms influence above ground activities of, say, herbivore or uh, beneficial insects, such as pollinators. And also in push-pull farming, the maize coming from push-pull plots has been observed to have low mycotoxin levels and probably it may be because of differences in soil microorganisms profile. So this study is trying to look at uh, interaction between push-pull technology and soil microbial profiles. How does push-pull influence soil microbial changes and how in turn do these changes contribute to functioning of the technology? So eventually we look toward to improving effectiveness of this technology, uh, but also to try to improve uptake by farmers. So for methods, we obtained the samples from ICPE, the International Center for Insect Physiology and Ecology in Kenya, and they have push-pull plots which have been running since 1998. And all the plots have either monoculture and push-pull. 
So we got samples from both monoculture and push pull, corresponding monoculture and push pull plots. Uh, after that, the samples were pre prepared like sieving and homogenizing, and DNA was extracted using a collagen kit, uh, followed by DNA sequencing, paired in sequencing on Illumina MySec. And sequencing was done to target 16S, V1, V3 region, and also ITS region. But in this study, I will focus on 16S findings. So that analysis was done mostly on CHIME 2, including quality control, denoising, and the construction of your feature table, and diversity analysis and taxonomy inference. But the feature table was exported as a biome table uh, into Calypso and metagenesis and other diversity analysis were conducted in these two software. So when it comes to findings, and we begin with alpha diversity, we saw that there was a slightly higher uh, diversity of soil bacterial species within monoculture plots when compared to push-pull plots. And this is probably presence of desmodium in push-pull plots adds additional pressure, selection pressure of soil microorganisms. Because we know soil and resource soil microorganisms, are, they are determined by which plants are growing above through, um, of course, root exudates. But also when we look at microbial composition evenness, uh, it was higher in push-pull plots and lower in maize monoculture plots. And when we look at beta diversity treatment, uh, beta diversity by treatment, we see that soil microorganisms from push-pull plots, they cluster slightly together and away from maize monoculture plots. So there are differences when you look at this snapshot overall snapshot of microbial profiles, there are differences between microorganisms that are found in maize push-pull plots and maize monoculture plots. And these breakout is principal component analysis and jacket principal component analysis plots, they both show the same uh, pattern of uh, diversity of soil microorganisms in push-pull and maize monoculture. Also, when we look at better diversity by years, we see that the younger plots seem to have more diverse microbial profiles, while the older plots are going into becoming more uniform. As you can see, the 2003 plots, uh, they cluster much further away from the older 1998-1999 plots. Uh, coming to taxonomy, so five phyla made up more than 90% of the total abundance, and these are actinobacteria, Chloroflexi, Protobacteria, Acidobacteria, and plant Plantomycetes, and a total of 25 phyla were uh, classified by the Green Genes database. And taxonomy at the genus level was a bit more tricky uh, because many genera were left unclassified, which makes the information a bit less useful, but a total number of 285 genera were obtained. And this just gives a picture, uh, at least some, a lot of the genera are unclassified, if you look on the left uh, hand side of this uh, pie chart, and a few such as Fusarium, Tauromyces, and Cercophora, uh, they are the ones which were able to be uh, classified by their names at genus level. But of the classified genera, we see some abundant more in push pull plots, including Cetophoma, Subulicystidium, Pythia, and Myrothesium and some are more abundant in maize monoculture plots, uh, including Chesomium, uh, Xenocremonium, and Acrophylla. Its plot is not shared. The plot for uh, taxonomy at genus level uh, in maize monoculture plots is not shared here. So we also looked whether sequencing depth was enough to cover the expected diversity of soil microorganisms, and yes, as you've seen from this alpha reaction plot, uh, as it becomes, it starts to plateau, then that means all the expected diversity may have been captured. And also looked at correlation, which um, genera tended to co-occur together, which tended to have a negative correlation. And for example, Lysobacter uh, was strongly positive correlated to Nanocystis, Pseudomonas, uh, Chloronema and Bucolderia, while Bacillus was strongly correlated to Planctomyces, Cerobacter and Ramlibacter. 
So to conclude, we would say uh, push-pull farming does influence uh, soil microbial profiles, making them more uniform compared to maize monoculture. But at the same time, older plots uh, seem to have more uniform microbial profile compared to younger plots. And the limits on classification by databases also set a limit on how much we can use this information, such as in linear discriminant analysis effect size. And we see some presence of some taxa correlated to uh, strongly showed strong correlation to each other, maybe contributing to functional redundancy. And also, we hope that with whole genome sequencing, it may be uh, able to fill the remaining gaps. So thank you, and I'd like to thank our collaborators, including CEDA funding, uh, collaborators in Kenya, also in Cornell University and University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. And please, let's connect on Twitter. Thank you.